Okay, good afternoon here from the Hollywood Times in Hollywood, California. I'm Valerie Milano, the publisher and senior editor, and I want to welcome our guest today, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey, Valerie. Hey, everybody. I'm Paul Brooks. I am the co-writer and director of a weird little horror movie we did called Hunting for the Hag. And I love horror, so this was a good one for me. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So did the Salem Witch Trials inspire aspects of uh, of the hag's origin? Yeah, I would I would say it did uh, exp aspects of it would be the right term. Um, we we sort of took uh, inspiration from a couple different things and put them in a pot and blended it up to turn it into something that was kind of its own story, you know, so. There's some Salem witch stuff, and we just did some research kind of on the fly to pull from a couple different witch type things, basically. So you obviously like horror, and that's why you 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 went to this genre. Yeah, I'm a pretty big horror guy. Um, I've been making movies for, oh, I don't know, probably 15 years now, um, and always wanted to do a horror feature. And it's tough making a movie, um, but we finally were able to get all of our ducks in a row, get the financing in place, get some great actors on board and make it happen. So it took me 15 years, but we finally made a horror movie. All right. Well, you said before we went on air that you're in Oklahoma now, but tell the viewers where it was filmed and why you filmed it there. Yeah, so I'm from central Illinois. And we decided to film it uh, in central Illinois because it's cheaper. Uh, I lived in LA for six years and there's, I miss it every day. There's tons of stuff, you know, about LA that is great, but it can be very difficult to kind of cut through all the red tape in Hollywood. Uh, so filming something in central Illinois, you say, you know, hey, we're thinking about shooting uh, this thing here. And people go, oh, can I can I be in it? Can I help in any way? And there's uh, a certain enthusiasm uh, in an area like that where just, you know, a lot of movies don't get filmed very often. So um, it, it was good for that reason. It also helped keep the cost down in a lot of ways. Um, and so we made, made the decision to film just outside of Pontiac, Illinois, is actually where we shot it. Okay, good. Good reasons for doing it there, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems as though the villains in The Hag uh, were of natural and supernatural, uh, supernatural in, uh, variety. Why was it important to show how evil the shooters were in the film? I think that uh, if you're going to, ha I'm 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 a big proponent of baking in a little bit of social commentary into your art, whatever your art may be, movie, TV show, book, music, whatever the case may be. We wanted to make sure that we had a little something to say, and I think that if you watch the film, uh, that's kind of what we're getting at right there is what it might be like for a group of young women to go on a little adventure, a little road trip, uh, what is supposed to be a very fun and innocent uh, little excursion into the country ends up being kind of a nightmare for our main characters in the film. And I think that we wanted to say something about that. My co-writer, Sierra Renfro, uh, had a lot to do with that in terms of sort of the the way that some of the other characters in this film, one of who is unfortunately played by myself, um, decided to behave. And so uh, if you watch the movie, my hope is that there's a little bit of discussion afterwards as to your question as to why that is. Uh, why, uh, you know, the, the ladies in the film have to go through what they go through basically yeah i know we're trying not to give away 
many spoilers. I'm trying. Um, it's such a fine line. <laughs> yeah, but I know. So, I know that you know. I can't publish the article until after April second. Was my oh is what okay. I was told. So why is that? Because that's when it comes out. Yeah, I think that we're just trying to preserve the mystique a little bit and make sure that uh, we don't get too deep into spoilers because. One of the things that we really wanted to do with the film was put some twists and turns in there. Um, and so I, I think that uh, hopefully people watch the movie and it's not quite what they were expecting going into it. You know, you, you get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, we like to dabble in a couple different subgenres, um, And to me, that's a lot of fun. Sure. Well, what are you thinking? Will there be an, another installment, second installment? We get that question. That, I mean, will we see the hag destroyed? We get that question a lot uh, Do you? With, okay. with the screenings that, that we've done so far at uh, different film festivals and the premiere that we had in my hometown. Yeah, we get that question a lot. And if somebody wants to give us, I don't know, yeah. two and a half million dollars, we'll do it. Um, I think that if we were to do a sequel, it would we would want to do something a lot bigger. Um, we would love to go a lot bigger with it. And I'm curious, you know, with the kind of being on the cusp right now of the movie getting ready to come out, I am curious what the appetite for that is going to be. As a filmmaker, I don't really want to do something um, just for the sake of doing it myself. I would want I would want to uh, get the sense that that our audience wanted that. So I'm I'm very curious to see kind of what the response to the film is, and if there's enough enthusiasm and money there, we'll think about it. Hmm. Yeah, good answer. Um, so the actors, uh, mostly the women, did you know them? What was the casting process? Yeah, I knew everybody in the oh. film prior to to casting them in the film um which was great uh i don't feel like this happens very often but i wrote sierra and i wrote the movie for pretty much everybody who is in the film those the, those characters were written for those actors specifically um and every timing and everything just worked out to where you know everyone was available to do it uh, so everyone that you see in the film, that's kind of our number one draft picks for those characters, you know. So it was a very fortunate set of circumstances of everything coming together. And for the girls, I thought that, um, I, like I said, I knew I knew everybody beforehand, and I thought that Jasmine and Alexa and Sierra would have good chemistry on screen together. I thought that. They would look like three girls that you could picture hanging out together. You could picture them going on a road trip together because I think that's very important. If you don't have that chemistry right and it doesn't feel believable, then you're probably just not going to be very in invested in what they're going through. Yeah, good. It's interesting that you know them all. That's cool. Um, so are you thinking about, you know, besides maybe having another installment, are you thinking about something for the future, a different type of film? Yeah, definitely. We would love to do more. Me and my producer, Seth, have talked about this extensively. And kind of once we get through the process here of getting the movie out and getting it streaming and everything, we're going to start talking about that and see kind of what direction we go in. We'd like to do something really different, uh, maybe even not necessarily horror, but uh, to your earlier question, if the appetite is is there to do a sequel or to do another horror film, I have about 50 different things that I would like to do. So there will definitely be something in the future. It's just a matter of figuring out exactly what it's going to be. We also shot a TV show uh, last year that's going to be coming out later this year. It's called Ghost Girls. Uh, and Sierra from Hunting for the Hag is in that one as well. And it's a, like a paranormal reality show. And we shot two new episodes of that uh, at a couple really cool locations. And I'm working on 
getting all of that um, edited and finished right now. So we're hoping to have that out by uh, Halloween time. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, please keep us posted. Um, we're, like I said, the Hollywood Times uh, dot today. Also, we're also hollywoodtimes.net. And our YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times official. So uh, we'll be sending um, the PR company uh, the link to the piece on April 2nd. Um, and how can our viewers and our readers find you and your production? Company? So our production company is called Into the Night Motion Pictures. And if you would like to give us uh, a follow on Instagram, that's where we post most of our stuff. And it's ITN Motion Pictures on Instagram. Or you can also um, search for us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. If you just search for Into the Night Motion Pictures, uh, we should pop up on there as well. Beautiful. Now I recognize you from watching the film. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Thank about you. it. No, no. What, your character? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. You had to get somebody to do that part. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much again, Paul, for, for joining us and, and for, for your creativity. And I look forward to seeing more. Thank you, Valerie. It's, uh, you know, for small time filmmakers like myself, this sort of thing is a, a, a blast to do. So thank you for the opportunity. All right. Wonderful. Okay. Keep us posted in the future. Will do. Take care. Bye-bye.